I almost said good morning. Good evening, everyone. Isn't it an absolutely beautiful day? Glad to have you out tonight. Our kids are here as well. And we do have some absentees. Uh, Brother Joe Willis is uh, taking over for Impact Teens tonight. And Drayden, there is teen group um, out back there. And uh, that's with, uh, where it usually is. But Pastor Matt and Miss Abby somehow, somewhere um, out there at the wilds got some kind of flu. And uh, they were starting to feel a little bit yucky on Sunday. He stayed home Sunday evening. And uh, then he's been fighting symptoms for two days. And he's turned a corner, feeling a little bit better today. But Abby's one day behind him. So let's put them on the prayer list. Amen? And uh, they're strong. They just didn't want to spread anything. And, uh, but it's great to have our kids in here tonight. And we're going to have another animal tonight. I wonder what that animal's going to be. Be thinking about which one it might be. Are you excited? Okay, I don't have a, hey, uh, brother, um, Matt, I did not make a picture, so I'm sorry about that, but we'll go ahead and get started. Take your hymn books and turn to 143, I Stand Amazed in the Presence. God is so good, and when we consider uh, how wonderful He is, Miss Kim, wait just a moment, I've got to get a hymn book. 143, all right. Let's go ahead and begin. Father, we thank you that we meet here tonight, and we pray that you would just bless in all the services being held. We thank you for um, Brother Willis being able to step up so quickly and to, to help take care of uh, the meeting for the Impact Teens tonight. God, we thank you that we have uh, an opportunity in here to look at your Word together and to meet together in prayer. Father, thank you for this wonderful group of folks that love you and are here uh, because they, they want to hear from you, Lord. Please speak to their hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me give you a couple announcements here and uh, go over the upcoming events. We do have <clears throat> the uh, Impact Teens. They will be having their testimony night. They were scheduled for this Sunday night. They are going to have to do that in another week because Pastor Matt was going to work with them tonight, getting things ready. Sometimes I like to call it a teen takeover where they take care of the whole service and share testimonies and some of the young men preach. Um, they're going to need another week for preparation, so that will be coming up at the uh, end of the month. But then also they have a big time blast with Mr. Patrick and that's going to be July 23rd from 10 to 1. Uh, and then two weeks later, we have our, um, not two weeks, one week after that, Friday, July 30th from 10 to 2 is our uh, Mr. Patrick's Super Summer Spectacular for our first through sixth graders. Um, for our nursery workers and those ladies in the church who would like to serve in the nursery, let me please implore of you, uh, we need you at that nursery workers meeting and we need more help. Um, so some folks will be moving away, leaving vacancies. We need to fill those. And uh, Mr. Hani is also ready to get everybody CPR certified. Uh, if you need that renewal, some of you need a card for work to show that you've been CPR trained. Uh, she can do those renewals for you. I think it's just $10 to get the card from Red Cross. But she's uh, authorized to do the training. That's Saturday, July 31st at 8.30. And... Uh, 
So some teens came in. They're looking for, where do I go? So, all right. The teens also have a, boy, they're doing a lot this summer. Teen tubing trip will be August 5th at 1 o'clock. Bring your own tube. And then at the end of the month, anyone interested in working with children's ministries of any kind for Master Club, uh, for uh, music program, and a junior church, children's church, Sunday schools, all children's ministry workers meeting will be on August 21st. So please mark your calendar for all of those events there. Do you have a praise that you'd like to share tonight? We'll take our prayer requests at the end of our Bible study. A praise you want to share. Mm -hmm. I'm Emily Kirby, the lady who's coming for the Lord's Prayer. She got to go home today. So she's still um, enduring a lot of pain and going down her spine and things of that nature, but she is able to go home, so that is definitely, definitely a praise. Amen. That's great. Anna. Will you introduce us to these wonderful kids? Hi there. Hey. And Mark. <laughs> tell, us, tell us your names. Um, my name is Charles. That's your last boy. That was Charles and Dior. Dior. Morgan. Everyone say hello. They are now moved down here from way up north, and it is so much nicer and warmer here than up in Detroit, isn't it? It's really nice, and we don't get nearly as much snow, and that's kind of nice too. But when we, go, when we do get snow, people here aren't used to the snow, and they go crazy when they see a snowflake. Can you believe that? And you guys are going to say, ah, we see snow all the time up in Detroit. Mm -hmm. All right. Make sure you guys get the chance to say hi to them. Charles, Dior, and Morgan, we're glad you're here. That's a praise for me. How about anybody else? Yes, Miss Millie. Yes. Okay, yes. You're going to learn something. Yes. <laughs> She's going to teach you. And the same uh, travel tomorrow. Where are you headed to? They come in tomorrow. Okay. Friday. Okay. Oh. All right. Anybody else? Oh, hands everywhere. Okay, I'll start with Mr. Corey because I think his is more exciting. I saw you wearing crutches. We're using crutches coming in. Let's hear about this praise. <laughs> I, uh, I, I am thankful that I am still able to you know, get around and stuff. But uh, I just wanted to praise God for uh, you know my my kids. When I got home, uh, they led me to believe that it was a terrible day, and all of them were standing in the corner, and they said that they weren't allowed to get out of the corner until Mom said so. And I was like, what? What happened? And then it turned out they were just joking. They had a really good day. It's okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I just praise God for a good day. I think that the sense of humor didn't fall very far away from that tree, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I'll be honest, I, I, was, I was a little late. You know, I was like, well, I guess that's not surprising you guys. You know, <laughs> I'm tearing my home down, and then all of a sudden it was, you know, it was a joke. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Corbin said, yeah, thanks, Dad. <laughs> Amen. Okay, Will? I am just thankful for all the little things that God does throughout our weeks days, all that, just to show that he's in control and just remind us that he's got it. Amen. Everything. He's got it. So many this week. Amen. Okay, another hand over here. Rachel. Small little, it's a praise, but small little prayers go a long way. I've been praying for James. He's going out in the field for 10 days. It's gone down to seven, hopefully five, but it's a small praise. And uh, we've gotten a little bit more Direction where we're going to go in his army career and, and such. So, okay. Big praise All right, yeah. Who's got a smaller praise? <laughs> I mean, usually, I got a bigger one than that. Okay, we're going smaller tonight. Small praises. 
anybody else? When I was driving to work today, I was feeling a little bit tired, a little bit discouraged. I just kind of felt a little wore out. And so I decided to just start saying the things I was thankful for. And I thought, I probably haven't done this a lot. So the whole way to work, which is 40 minutes, I just spent time thanking the Lord for everything I could think of to be thankful for. And by the time we got there, I felt better. Amen. So. Amen. Okay. Any other praises? All right, let's sing one more song, 151, Grace is Flowing, 151. aside for a moment and take our Bibles and we'll get into our Bible story. We do have another lesson here tonight. And so how many of you want to guess what animal we're going to study? Any ideas? Samuel. It's a cat. A cat. Cats. Ooh, is there a passage on demons? <laughs> hmm. Cats. Okay. Grant. A sloth. Oh, that's a good idea. There's lots of verses about sloth. Yes? The elephant. Hmm. Yes. The goldfish? I read this week that there's an entire lake that is completely overrun uh, with goldfish because they devoured all the other species' eggs, and there's nothing in the lake but goldfish because someone got rid of their pets and dumped them in the lake. Oh, disrupted the ecosystem. Okay. Ew, the snake. Yeah, not tonight. Okay, Corbin. The bear. Hmm. Okay. Yes, Lydia? The lion. Boy, there's a lot of these in the Bible. If we did one a week, we'd, have, we'd be here for a year, wouldn't we? Okay, Lydia? The wolf, that's your favorite, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Watch out, she's got a pet wolf at her house. Actually, it's not a wolf. What kind of dog is that long, wiry-haired thing? Again? A German wire-haired pointer. Mm-hmm, and he knows how to open the door and get in. And he's quite intelligent, okay? Grant? A what? A flamingo. Okay. Okay. I see many, 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 many horns, but you're gonna wait. we're going to have to move on. Our verse tonight is our verse we use every week, Job 9.10, which says, Doeth great wonders past finding out. You don't need to turn there. Which doeth great wonders past finding out, yea, and wonders without number. We could be here forever and ever and ever studying. God's his creator is amazing. Let's pray and ask God to help us learn something about his creation. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'd help us tonight, that you would teach us wonderful things from your word. And God, I pray that you would help our young people and old alike 
to learn to love you and adore you and worship you and just to recognize the glories and wonders of your creation that can impact us and change our lives. And may we not live our lives weary and worn and depressed and discouraged, but just to take a moment and to look at your wonderful care. And if you can care so much about all of the animals and the created world, you, we know you care about us. You care about us more than you even do the birds. And uh, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, here's a moment when I need all of the children to go ahead and pester mom and dad right now to see if there's any pennies like this in their purses, pockets, or wallets. And if you find one, hold it up. I've got something for the first four people that can find a penny. Okay, there's one right there. Okay, Dior? Okay, you come on up here. Oh, you, you are ready. You stand right here with me, Samuel. Dior? Okay, boy, you guys were so fast. Let's take one from this side. Over here, Grant, come on up here. Okay, and um, Brolin? Okay, now, I've got a deal for you. Would you like to give me your penny? Sure. Sure. And uh, are you expecting anything in return? Not really. <laughs> Not really. It's a penny. Well, how about I give you a dime? Would that make you happy? Because it's more than a penny. That's worth more than a penny. Okay. Well, thank you. Would you like to give me your penny? Thank you. Now, just so you know, these are all going in the offering box when we're done. But that money that you got, you can keep. Okay? Would you like to have this yeah. 25 <laughs> pennies that's a pretty good deal isn't it okay would you like to give me your penny thank you how would you like to have four pennies is that a good deal not as good as his oh man well after church you see miss kim and you talk to her about getting more than just three <laughs> pennies okay would you like to give me your penny? Yes. You sure you're going to part with it? Mm -hmm. You might go home with nothing. Don't you, you sure you want to give it to me? Yes. Why? Because you saw something over there? <laughs> How about this? You know what this is worth? How much? One dollar. One hundred of these. So you can have this back or you can give it to me. I'll give it to you. And then I'll give you this. 100 more. Is that a good deal? And you know what? I only have one penny left to put as an offering. I'm going to give the offering to you. There you go. Thank you, guys. Now, do you like doing business with Pastor Craig? <laughs> That's pretty good, huh? All right. Hey, where's that dollar? No, I'm not asking for it back. Just give me five. All right, good deal. How about you? Five? All right. Where's a dollar? <laughs> ah! You're getting out of here before I get it, right? Okay, go have a seat here. Now, if, if, I, if you gave me a penny and I gave you one penny back, you'd be like, ah, oh, that's no big deal. Well, you know, I want to tell you tonight about something just like that. That when you put a little bit in... It has a huge return. You know, tonight we're not going to talk about an animal, but we're talking about God's creation. Tonight I want to tell you about a very pretty flower. In fact, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? When you think something's pretty, other people say, ugh, that's ugly. But let me tell you, I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty ugly. But it is a flower. Can you think of an ugly, ugly flower? Some really ugly flowers? A Venus flytrap. Any other ugly ones? Hmm. Well, let me show you this flower. I brought this flower with me tonight. How do you like this one? This is a flower. 
How many, give, it, give an applause nice and loud if you think this is a, it's, it's a very beautiful flower. How many, let's hear the applause if you think it is just like an ugly looking flower. Okay. This has hair like a mustache. Hmm. But this is one ear of corn. Every stalk of corn only has one or two of these. Each one has between 400 and 600 kernels. So on average, 500. So for every stalk of corn, you put one seed in the ground and it grows one stalk and that stalk will make 1,000 seeds. That's pretty amazing. You gave one cent and you got not just 100, but you got 1,000 seeds. That's just the first generation. If you take those thousand seeds and you plant them all and they all get nurtured and watered and fed and they grow and they, everything's perfect, then that one seed turns to 1,000 and those 1,000 seeds turn to 1 million in just two generations. In three generations, how many more would that be? Quick, do your math. Three zeros multiply by 1,000. What's 1,000 million? A billion, boy, some of you guys are smart, okay? So within three generations, you have one billion seeds. You, know, you might be able to eat one ear of corn, but how would you like to have to eat one billion seeds of corn? Whew. You know, I think God created corn, even though it's really ugly, but it serves a purpose because it shows us a picture of how God likes to bless us. It doesn't take much for us to invest in God, and He rewards us not tenfold, but a thousandfold. And if we keep investing in God, He continues to bless and bless and bless. Now, the crazy stuff here, does anyone know what this is called? Silk, okay. This is silk, and it's kind of sticky. If you tried to pull it off the cob, Okay, so let me break this open. Ooh, I would not recommend getting your corn at Walmart. That's pretty sad. Okay, now what is this? It's all sticky. Did you know what each one of these is? Each one is a tube. It's a tube that goes from out here in the air down through, and every single one of these seeds has to have the pollen go down to the seed in order that it can produce more seeds later on. It goes through that little tube, all these little tubes. Now, if you have that, when, a, when you plant one seed and it grows up, what do you call that part on the top? The tassel, or the other word is the anther. And the anther is the male part that releases pollen grains. My goodness. <laughs> How many pollen grains were released into the air for each ear of corn? Between two to five million grains of pollen. And they settle within 20 to 25 feet. And so if you're planting corn, should you plant one long row? No, they always recommend planting in squares of corn so it can cross-pollinate a lot better. So for each one of these, God has created between two to 5,000 grains of pollen just to catch one little tube. God is making sure it's taken care of. Now here's the amazing thing. The silk that must grow all the way from in here, all the way up and get to the top and come outside to catch the pollen. It has to arrive there at the same time that the pollen is falling from the top of the plant down. That has to be absolute perfect timing. And what if then these little stalks, uh, tubes gets all the way up and comes out and it's a rainy day. And the pollen is released on a rainy day. And the pollen just goes, and goes right to the ground. It's not going to work. So God's creation of this beautiful flower. Do you, would you consider that a pretty flower? That is really quite an... And I'm going to pass this around. Who's cleaning the church this week? Okay. 
I'll start with you. I want the kids to be able to feel all that, because so, some of you kids have never been able to clean or husk corn. You just get it out of a can. But let's go ahead, you can feel the silk, and uh, we'll do one for over on this side, Presley. Okay, you can start to, oh my word. All over. Now let me tell you, as it's coming around, God's creation is so amazing that that silk has to come out just at the right time that the pollen is falling. But guess what happens? If the anther is ready to unload all that pollen, knows that it's a rainy day, it won't release it. In fact, it'll hold the pollen until all of the dew is dried up from the plant. Then it releases it. It has to be dry. And so God created it all to be, and scientists call this an intelligent plant. It knows what perfect timing to do things. Is that just chance? Did it just happen that way? Or did God plan it that way? Now, let me tell you about this. Have you ever seen in Tennessee where we get lots and lots of rain in the summer? Did you notice we've been having a week of rain? What did we have a few weeks ago? We had no rain. Oh, my grass is turning brown. It's hot and dry. You know what God's doing? God's giving the corn a chance to pollinate. And then, after it's pollinated, what does the corn need to do? The corn needs to get lots and lots of rain to make every one of those little scrunchy little kernels to get plump and fat and juicy and sweet. And so we have the rain. And it'll rain a lot while that corn grows, and then guess what God does? He stops the rain. Here in Tennessee, it's just perfect with that cycle of weather. And then we'll have a dry spell, and the farmers can go and cut the corn. But here, they don't actually cut the corn because they grow seed corn, and um, they grow feed corn, stuff like that, not the ears that you eat. They, they let it dry on the vine until October until it's all withered up, and then they, they use their combines. But all of this is a wonderful picture of God's blessing. Let's look at some Bible verses and learn about the word corn in the Bible. Turn to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Now, the Bible says in verse 24, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Now, the word corn, I, cho I chose this verse because it's going to help us understand. When you come across the word corn in the King James Bible, it basically can be, could have been translated grain. And we don't always know whether it's talking about a grain of wheat or a grain of oats, or a grain of, when you think of, like an ear of corn. But this verse tells us very clearly what we're talking about. What, what kind of ear did Jesus talk about in this verse, in verse 24? Was it a corn on the cob? What does verse 24 say? Hmm? A corn of wheat. Okay, so it was, and I drove by a wheat field today where they had cut all the wheat, and there was a whole bunch left, and I thought about going over there and just cutting it myself and taking it and uh, grinding it. I did that as a kid one time. Uh, we grew rye, and we tilled it in in the spring. It grew all winter long under the snow. We tilled it in, and it's a great uh, amend uh, amendment for your, for your, for your garden. But... My dad missed some, and it grew to be this tall, and we cut it, and uh, oh, I had that rye, and we ate it. We got it dried, and we ground it, and if you can go to a farmer and find some wheat left over in a corner, maybe they'll give you permission to go out and cut it, and you can grind it and make your own bread. That's kind of fun, whole wheat bread. But in verse 24, the Bible says that this is a corn of what kind? 
wheat. So that's a good example. Now, I'm going to tell you a story in Genesis chapter 41. Don't need to turn there. When Pharaoh had a disturbing dream one night, he woke up and he said, help, I need an interpreter. I don't know what my dream was. And so they went and they got who? Joseph, someone said. They went and got Joseph. Joseph came, and he was an interpreter of dreams. And Pharaoh told him the dream. He said, I dreamed that there were seven big fat cows. And then seven really skinny cows came up and devoured them. And then I dreamed about seven big fat ears of corn. And then seven very sick ears of corn came up and devoured those big fat ones. And I don't know what this is, and I'm disturbed. And so Daniel, uh, Daniel, uh, so uh, Joseph, thank you. <laughs> Joseph said, You have seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. So we're talking about corn being a picture of God's blessing because it's many, many fold. It is also a picture of God's blessing that when He blesses it, we're really blessed. But without his blessing, we, we suffer. Now, we'll come back to that story a little bit later on. But turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Now, we will come back to John 12. But just look at a few verses here in Mark chapter 4. Verse 26. Mark 4, 26. And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring, up, uh, spring and grow up, and he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, and then the ear, and after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he put it in the sickle because the harvest is come. Now, that's a parable that Jesus is teaching, but he's saying that the kingdom of God is like when you put a seed in the ground and you come back later and it's all grown. Now, how many scientists out there can explain how that works? Oh, yes, you can ask Mr. Scientist. And Mr. Scientist comes out and he goes, I know how that works. It is the germ of the corn. That kernel has a germ, a little tiny. Have you ever seen wheat germ sold in a jar? I sprinkle that on grits. Oh, that's good. It's sweet. Wheat germ's great. It's good for you. It's the healthiest, most nutritious part of the seed, right? And so you take that, that life is in the germ, and that grows, and, and uh, then the, uses the other part of the kernel to have the nutrients to make that little stem come up through the ground and the root go downward, and, and they can tell you how it all happens, but no scientist can tell you at all how it knows to do that. It's called life, and God created it, and you know not how? Even today, even with brilliant scientists, they would have to admit what Jesus said. In verse 27, you should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring up and spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. Now, let's not lose track of what Jesus is talking about. What's he talking about here? He's telling, not just telling a story about corn. He's telling us a story about the church. The kingdom of God is going to grow from a small group of disciples in that upper room to where thousands and thousands got saved. And even today, there are millions and millions of believers of Jesus Christ. The church grew. People got saved. I can share the gospel with someone, and they can receive it, and they can join the kingdom of God. But I do not know how they get saved. God gives the spiritual life. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. It's amazing to see. But there's another lesson about corn, and that's back in John chapter 12. If you look there, there is the blessing. Before we read, let me just review with you. In Genesis chapter 41, we had the story of the seven ears of corn that were fat and full, and then there was the seven withered ones from the famine that came. And we saw the blessing, or the picture of God's blessing. Secondly, we see the blessing 
on the local church. And then here now we have the blessing of, and I encourage you to take notes and mark this down, the blessing of personal sacrifice. The blessing of personal sacrifice. Notice with me as we read in verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my Father honor. The blessing of personal sacrifice. Now think about this. If, if you do not, if you just take one of, those little, one of those little kernels of corn and you put it on your dresser and you look at it every morning when you get up and you wait, oh, that's my precious, I'm going to name it Colonel Corn. And I'm going to take Colonel Corn with me wherever I go. And uh, he's my little friend. He's my pet seed. And he never, ever, ever gets put in the dirt. What's going to happen to him? Did you know that God's life-giving power is amazing that they opened up the pyramids of Egypt and they found these golden bowls full of wheat that were offered to the gods. And they had been discovered 4,000 years later. And they just took a few of the seeds and planted them, and they grew. Now, I can't keep seeds like that at my house. I try to keep seeds for more than a year or two, and they kind of get mildewed and full of mites and bugs. And, but they were preserved down there in that pyramid. It's amazing, the life that is there. But that seed, if you have kernel corn, and he just never gets in the ground, guess what? He abides alone. But if he were to fall out of your pocket into nice soil, dirt, nice loam soil, and grow, he could produce much, much more, a thousandfold. That's a blessing. If Jesus chose not to die on the cross, where would we be? He knew, he was the example for us, that if you're ever going to receive the blessing, you must die to yourself. What happens if you don't die to yourself? You live without God's blessing. God's blessing comes when we die to ourself. Now think about that. Verse 25, He that loves his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Now what does it mean to hate, by the way? I've got to explain this. Does it mean I go around, I hate you, Craig. I hate you. You're terrible. You're disgusting. You make me sick. I can't stand you, Craig. Now, if you see someone talking like that, they need a little help. Maybe they need some encouragement. Maybe they need their thinking straightened out. But you generally don't see people doing that. What does it mean to hate? Well, I want you to understand. It means that you don't consider it the number one priority. Let me explain this. Some of you may remember verses like this. He that spares his rod hates his child. Now, do you hate your child? No. But you don't consider his upbringing the priority. You're meeting his wants and desires today, not his future. How about this? If you neglect to provide for your own, you hate your family, right? You prefer yourself over them. That's an absence of love, right? Jesus explained that if you call someone fool, you fool, what did he say? You hate them. Wow, that's hatred? I don't, I don't hate them. Well, you call them a fool, that means there's an absence of love in your heart for that person, and you really don't consider them a priority. Now, in Luke 14, 26, he says, you cannot be my disciple until you hate something. Look there, Luke 14, 26. Luke 14, 26. If any man come unto me and hate not his father and mother 
and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, I remember a very difficult, sad day. Um, I think I was in Bible college, and I went home to visit my family, and my mom was very sad. And I said, why are you so sad? And she said, I was teaching Sunday school, and the lesson included John 14, 26. And I taught the children that verse. And the child went home and told his mother, who did not know the Lord. And the mother came back and said, what are you teaching my children? To hate me? And they never understood. Now, the mother professed to know the Lord Jesus, just didn't want to go to a church that preached the Bible. You see, there needs to be an explanation with this verse. What does it mean? Does it mean you go around, if you want to be a disciple of Jesus, you have to go to your father and you say, I hate you. Check. Go to your mother and say, I hate you too. And then you go to your sister, I hate you. And your brothers, which that's easy, I hate you. Do you do that? Now I can be a disciple of the Lord. That's not what, obviously that's not what Jesus is saying. But he did say, if you don't hate them, you can't be my disciple. So what does it mean? It means to consider not a priority. He even says you've got to hate yourself. Look, I'm not the priority here. Who's the priority? Jesus. I love my father. I love mom. I love my sister and even my brothers. But they're not the number one priority in my life. Who is? Jesus. So if it ever came down to it that I had to choose between what Jesus said and my friend or my mom or my dad, I would have to obey Jesus if they told me different than Jesus, right? Now, I don't think any of us really have ever experienced that. But if it ever did happen, we choose Jesus, right? That's what it means when the Bible says hate. It doesn't mean you go around and I hate you. It just means you're not the priority. Jesus is the priority. So keep that in mind. Let's go back to John chapter 12 and verse 40, uh, 24. I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loves his life shall lose it, and he that hates his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. So what you have to do is you have to say, not my will, but God's be done. Can you say that? So here, you are the little kernel of corn. That's you. And you don't want to get put down off the dresser and carried. You don't want to not be carried around anymore. You like being carried around, but you know what? You get put in that dirty, dark old dirt. I'm never going to see anybody again. No. And the dirt comes down over you. Unless you die to self, you'll never have the blessings of God. That's it. Isn't that wonderful? As long as you hold out, I want my way. I don't want to give in to God. You'll never, ever, ever have the blessings of God. The blessings of God come when we die to ourself. You know, look over in the same chapter, verse 42. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him, but... Because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. You know, here's these religious leaders, and they, what did they choose more? Which was their choice? Do I want the Pharisees to like me, or do I want to obey God? Hmm. If I obey God... I'll lose my friends, I'll lose my job, I'll lose my position, I, will, I won't get praise anymore, they're going to get angry at me, you know, and, and there's God. But and, and these guys give me friendship, and they, they say wonderful things about me, and then there's God over here. But these guys are so great, so I'm not going to say that I believe in Jesus. You know what they lost sight of? They lost sight of the fact that if they just die to self and surrender to God, they'll have a thousand-fold blessings. And that's right where many of us are. 
I don't want to give in to God. I don't want to do what he says. I don't want to obey the scripture. I want to hang on to what I'm hanging on to. I like this over here. I don't want to give up my sin. And God says, you'll never experience blessing. Isn't that wonderful? So, turn back to Genesis 41. I want to show you the end of the story, and we'll end with this. Genesis 41. Verse 25. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath showed him, uh, showed Pharaoh what he's about to do. The seven good kine, or cattle, are seven years, and the seven good years are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kine that came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh, what God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And I want you to notice how the Bible describes this famine. And all the plenty that you were once experiencing shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land, and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for it shall be very grievous. Do you realize you can be walking with the Lord and having His blessings and obeying Him, and get to a point in your life where God puts something out there that you don't want to give up? And you could have, up until this point, you could have years and years and years of walking with God and God's blessing, and all of a sudden you can cross the line and lose it all. Because God continually puts out there in front of us, almost daily sometimes, dying to self. And no matter how long you've been a Christian, no matter how much you know about the Bible, no matter how many verses you can quote and all the doctrine you can recite, you know what? You can get to a point where you don't have God's blessing just because you won't give in. Isn't it interesting? All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for the lesson of corn. We want to be full and plenty. We don't want to be withered and to be grievous. And Father, I pray that you would just help us tonight to see multiple, multiple, uh, multifold of your blessing in our life, where when we die to self, we have thousandfold blessing. Father, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.